Let's solve this AC circuit analysis question together. Find V of T in this RLC circuit. We'll use the phasor transform technique, transforming this circuit from time domain to frequency domain. The voltage source as a phasor is 10 phase zero degrees. And now we have to find the impedance of each component. The impedance of a resistor is just the resistance itself, so we'll still have one ohm here and one ohm there. The impedance of an inductor is J omega L, where J is the imaginary unit and omega is the radial frequency. So what's omega in this case? Here's the thing. A key characteristic of linear circuits is that when you apply a sinusoidal input of a certain frequency, the output will also be a sinusoid of the exact same frequency, and that frequency will be maintained everywhere in the circuit. So, omega can be obtained simply by looking at the omega of the source. Omega, the radial frequency, is the factor next to t the multiple of the independent variable time. In this case, it's just one, so omega is one radian per second, and we can substitute one Henry for the inductance, giving us an impedance of J ohms. A capacitor has an impedance of one over J omega C. Again, omega is one, and the capacitance is one farad, giving us one over J, which works out to be negative j. The way to do this is to multiply the top and bottom by j, achieving this simplification. Finally, we'll transform the labeled voltage V of t into the frequency domain by making it a capital boldface V, meaning the phasor quantity V. And now we'll do regular circuit analysis on this frequency domain circuit. How do we find this voltage V? I'm going to combine this parallel chunk into a single impedance Z parallel. We have the resistor in series with the inductor all in parallel with the capacitor. So we have 1 plus J times negative J over 1 plus J plus negative J. The denominator simplifies to 1, and then we'll expand the top, giving us 1 minus j. Remember, j times itself is negative 1. OK, so this is the equivalent impedance of this parallel chunk, so we can replace this entire thing with an impedance of 1 minus j ohms, like this. And the nice thing about this simplification is that the voltage V is still intact. We did a parallel combination, and circuit components in parallel have the same voltage, and the simplified single impedance will show the same voltage V. So, now we can find this V using a simple voltage divider. V will be the input voltage source times R impedance, which is 1 minus J, over the sum of impedances, 1 minus J plus 1. 10 phase 0 is just a real number, 10, and the denominator simplifies into 2 minus J. And now we'll need to find the real part and imaginary part of this complex number so that we can then transform it into polar form. The way to do this is by distributing the 10, first of all, and then multiplying top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. The complex conjugate is basically a complex number with the same real part, but with the negative version of the imaginary part. The reason this helps is because it gives us a difference of squares in the denominator. And expanding this difference of squares gives us 2 squared minus j squared. 2 squared is just 4, 
and j squared is negative 1. So the denominator becomes 4 plus 1, which is 5. And now we can expand the numerator, effectively giving us the real part and imaginary part, because we don't see any j in the denominator anymore. Expanding the top and collecting like terms gives us 30 minus j10. If you've noticed, we write the j before the number, which is what we typically do in electrical engineering. Mathematicians usually write 10i instead of j10, but we like to put this complex number or imaginary unit first and then put the numeric value. It's just an engineering convention. We'll now separate the fractions, giving us a real part of 6 and an imaginary part of negative 2. It is now our objective to find the exponential form, the polar form, of this voltage. This will be 6.325 with a phase of negative 18.43 degrees. If you don't know how to get this, I recently posted a video on converting phasers to sinusoids and vice versa, so make sure to watch that video and this part will become clear to you. Now, we can find V of t, which is the initial voltage labeled in the time domain circuit, the original circuit. This will be 6.325 as the amplitude of the sinusoid. It'll be cosine omega t with the phase negative 18.43 degrees. What was omega again? That's it. The radial frequency of the sinusoidal input, which will stay constant throughout the entire linear circuit. One radian per second. So, that's it. This is the sinusoidal output voltage in the original RLC circuit we started with.